Hi everyone, I'm gonna show you how you can use Code Interpreter in ChatGPT to do some cluster analysis. And this is my first time trying this. We're gonna go through all of the steps together and let's see if it actually works. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, go into my account and I do have the ChatGPT Plus account. And if you do uh, and you're paying for that right, what you can do is go into your account, go down to where you see your name in the bottom left corner, click on the three little dots, go to settings, and in there you'll see beta features. And this is, first of all, an opportunity to get some different plugins, but here is the core code interpreter. So let's give that a shot. Go ahead and select it. And now to get it to work, you now need to go into GPT-4 and you see how I select that. And right now it's just set to be the normal GPT-4 version. But if I select code interpreter, you notice what happens at the bottom here, you get this plus sign, it gives you the ability to add a file. So I'm gonna do that. And the data set that I have, let's see here, I'm gonna bring it over. It's right here, and this is um, data that we're using for a project uh, at Belmont University where we are looking at hypertension data and we're looking to do different things. Now what you're gonna see in this data is it is community level data at the zip code level, as you see here. It's all these different factors. Um, that's um, the American Con uh, Community Survey data from the census, as well as the CDC places data. Plus we went and found some stuff that, as you can see, is a little bit sparse. Um, and here's your CDC data, and then we added a couple other things. So I don't wanna clean it, because I wanna see what happens with it. It does have things that normally what I would do with things like outlying and the Knoxville one, um, is I would turn those into dummy variables, and we'll see if it gives us that opportunity. So this is the data set. So I'm gonna go in here, hit the plus sign, and my data set is right there, perfect, go ahead and select OK, brings it in. Now I'm gonna just say what I want it to do, create, create five groups, because I want five using k-means clustering. That's all I'm gonna say, Let's see what happens. It's gonna be great if this works, okay? Great, you've loaded a file, and what's interesting is it's showing me, so it imported pandas, which that's how I would have uh, done that. It's starting to read it in, you see that here. It's even telling me I have 103 uh, columns, that is correct, and it's showing me some of those. And it says, you know, are you sure you wanna use all of those? And the answer is no, I don't. So what you'll see is I've got another file over here where I've already selected the ones that I wanna keep, and it goes, See here, it is a total of 74 of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy those. And let's just see if I was to come in here now and say, um, let's see, uh, are also, are there any specific pre-processing steps? Um, so I'm gonna say, uh, could you specify the columns? Use the following columns. And I'm gonna say, standardize, since it does mention it, I'd like to standardize the data. Now I'm not gonna go through any data science concepts, I'm just gonna do this stuff right now. Go ahead and add my columns, and that's all 74 columns right there. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm trying to see what happens with you all at the exact same time. Uh, so, okay, let's see what happens when it's showing my work. It's, you can see how it's selecting the columns. So what it's basically doing is creating a variable. That variable is gonna have 74 different quoted column names in there. That's what it's doing right now. This is so cool. So cool, or is it actually scary? That's the part that we need to figure out here. All right, it's, it's going through, it's got my food assist, it's, there's my CDC ones, binge, uh, high blood pressure, uh, do they take the medicine, are they cigarettes? So these are percentages, so percentage of people that smoke, things like that. Um, so what it's seeing now is there are things where they're seeing some, let's see, now let's standardize the data, okay, thank you. This will transform the data so that the distribution will be between zero and one, which is what I would do, that's probably standard scalar, Let's go up and it says standardize using the scalar method, standard scalar, there you go, I was correct. Haha, I might actually know what I'm doing here. I, by the way, am somebody that does use Python to do my data science uh, work, so I should be pretty familiar with this. 
Um, the data has been standardized. Now let's proceed. We will create the five groups. Now, what it did not do was let me know. I'm assuming that it filled in the uh, uh, missing values, probably with a median. I'd have to go and see that. And there's how you create it. Here's your clusters. Look at this number of clusters, five. It even used the random seed that I would have probably used, uh, 42. Why 42? We all know why you use the number 42. Um, I'll just leave it at that. And um, it fit the model. It then went through and it created the model. See how I've got cluster two, one, two, one, and so on. Each row in the data set now belongs to one of these. You can analyze these clusters to identify patterns and common characteristics among the data points. Wow, okay, so it does it zero to four, which is normal. It always starts with zero and then goes to four. Um, let's analyze the results. and have bad grammatical errors uh, in doing so. To analyze results, we can compute the mean of each feature. Okay, and it will give us a centroid. Let's see if this works. Uh, cluster one has relatively low median. All right, this is ridiculous. It's literally giving me a description of each one of these. Are you kidding me? Remember, these are general observations. Would you like to proceed to further analysis? No, because it's literally making me sick at this point. Um, yes. Oh my gosh. Do I sound like I'm a little kid playing around with this stuff? This is ridiculous. Cluster size, we can count. Yeah, I wanna see that. Uh, feature importance, we could try to determine which features are the most important. Wow. All right, I wanna start with cluster size. Let's see what that is gonna do. I, I'm assuming that's gonna list out the four. I'm sorry, the five, zero to four and it should tell me the counts. Okay, there you go. That's the number of zip codes that I had, and it shows how many are in each one. Excellent, what else can I do? Uh, cluster profiles, let's go ahead and do that. Would you like to proceed with any others? Yes, cluster profiles. This should tell me, I'm assuming means that type stuff for each one, maybe some descriptives. Uh, it's going ahead and creating the centroids. So centroids are basically, it's like if you had this big, Thing of dots, it's trying to find that middle point to do its best to give you an approximation. And let's see, as you can see, it'll if it says stop generating and you see these little three little dots moving like this, that's how you know it's still working. I'm gonna be quiet because I might cut and then come back just in case this is something that takes long. Okay, um, and that was about 20 seconds, I would say, maybe a little bit longer. Um, and it looks like it timed out. Something that'll happen when you have 74 different features. If I had like three or four, probably would have came out okay, but creating centroids with 74 features is a monumental task. So I'm just gonna say create visualizations and let's see what comes up. All right, we're testing it. Again, I have no idea if this is gonna work. Uh, it's one common approach to the visualization is dimension reduction technique since as a uh, principal component. So, but um, if you think about cluster analysis, cluster analysis reduces the number of observations or rows down into different groups. What PCA or uh, dimension reduction does is it takes the 74 columns and it reduces those down. So what I like to do PCA, yes use PCA and 2D. Oops, 2D. Let's go. All right. I feel like I'm watching a football game and seeing what the next play is. And All right, it's not that exciting, but it is to me. I'm telling you, this is so cool. It's work, finished working. See what that is? All right, that is way too freaking cool. So basically here's what it did, is it created two different uh, uh, clusters uh, within that, and then it merged those into those different sets. So then what I could do is see which of the columns fit into PCA1, PCA2 to be able to create this visualization. In the world of data science, this is cool stuff. This is cool. Would you like to proceed to offer any others? Um, what I really want is to see the rows of data and the cluster number. Let's just see what this does. 
I'm assuming this is going to show me code. And here we go. Here are a few of the rows. That's good enough. That's all I asked. Um, and you can see it's showing them there. Let's see. Oh, it's just showing me a few of the rows and columns. It's actually going through it. And when you are cutting it, it's going to keep going for a while here. So basically what it did, I got a feeling, is a dot head. Yep, there you go. So dot head means it'll give you the top five rows um, in your data. And you can see the two, one, the two, one, and the one is different ones. It shows you uh, some of the different features uh, for each one of those. And now the only thing I don't know how to do is download this data. How do I download a CSV file? Maybe I don't. I don't know. Oh, it gives me that look. Very nice. Each row represent. Let's see what it's saying. I have saved the data set with the added cluster. Com All right. Seriously. Seriously, it created the file for me. All right, this is this is the part where the old guy starts crying. This is so amazing. Um, it allows me to do that. All right, we're just gonna throw it on the desktop. And let's go ahead and open it, bring it over. And there's median age, which was the first one I asked for. And there's the clusters. Now, just to, just to do it, let's go and do a quick little pivot table with cluster. There we go. Let's go look at median age. And we'll make that a, an average. How about got household size, household income? There we go. Um, go ahead and make that an average. Um, I want to see, so since I've been using this mostly for hypertension, let's see if anything came out BP high. Go ahead and look at average. Let's even go to, um, we'll go to diabetes. And then there's um, lack of physical activity. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of those decimal places and average BP. Oh, you know what I'm missing here? Let's go ahead and I'm just going to add this one back in and that'll be our count. There we go. Let's move it. So now we have a count. And again, I'm not trying to be fancy here, but my biggest one is here. I've got average blood pressure of 42%. I've got one down here at uh, 28, that's only nine of my zip codes. I've got two here at 51. Those are, looks like middle of the row. We got one at 46, 26 different ones. That is considered high, folks, uh, for sure. Um, if it's that high, average income, you see you've got one at 84,000 um, and another one at 64. Here you go, you got low income, median age isn't anything particular, but interestingly, um, what do you see when you see low income? You see high blood pressure, high diabetes, high lack of physical activity. Um, very, very similar to a lot of the stuff that I see. So let's, let's talk about this here for a second. First and foremost, this was amazing. This literally, if I was to go in and look at the code, is pretty similar to what I would have done. Um, again, I would go way more in depth here. Here's where... I differ from obviously this. I would do more with feature engineering. I would go in and, and uh, make more features either based on uh, um, ratios or taking some of the categorical variables. Um, so it's, for example, I had basically urban and rural and I had that as a label and I could have made that a dummy variable. Make uh, one called rural and just one or a zero. Um, I also had the city and I think the city does have maybe a little bit in the city as in the metropolitan region. So in Tennessee, you've got Knoxville, Chattanooga, Clarksville, um, Memphis, and then Nashville. And so we could have seen some different um, uh, things there. That's a, that's a couple of the things. I, I probably would have used standard scalar. Um, I would have also gone in and done some analysis using inertia models to determine the number of clusters that I probably would have used. And maybe it'd be five, maybe it'd be four. I also probably would have used hierarchical clustering, which by the way, I could have done. 
I was just um, uh, not sure if that would have worked. And gosh, I might do that just to see what happens. Um, and that could have been a way to identify how many I could have had as well. The analysis part, I think I have to keep playing with that. I think I'm gonna do things, especially with 74 dimensions, where it would probably keep timing out. Um, what I probably would have liked to have done, um, which now it's probably a little late, is probably gone and done feature performance or feature imp importance. And that would let me know which of those had the highest influence on what made the different ones. And just to make sure that we don't have any overfitting in that way. So, but overall, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, it's scary. Uh, if you really think about it. and uh, But what I see here is not the coder or the data scientist going away, but your skills have got to change. Your skills have got to be about how do you take models and put them into action. You have to stop thinking about how do I just code? I just create a model based on math only. No, now it's your opportunity to truly use data science in a real situation, in reality, that goes from the true dilemma and the insights and to maybe even action that is good for a business, good for an organization, or in my case, good for a community. So there's your uh, Code Interpreter 101, 101 for cluster analysis.